hello and welcome back to my channel how are you all doing hope you're well so i've got something really exciting today and that is how to make lacto fermented salsa yes you heard me right if you're interested in learning how to make lacto fermented salsa please keep watching for this recipe i'll be using seven medium-sized tomatoes one and a half tablespoon of sea salt one medium-sized onion, four multicolored bell peppers, a bunch of coriander, a glass weight to keep the vegetables submerged, five cloves of garlic, two bay leaves, two hot peppers, and of course, a glass jar. Here's an overview of all the ingredients. To begin, I washed the bell peppers and removed the seeds. I'm going to start with the yellow pepper, just because it's yellow. I'm going to chop them into cubes, into small cubes. I'm going to transfer those into a bowl, then move on to the green pepper, then move on to the red bell peppers. For the bell peppers, I'm using one of each. So that's one green pepper, one red pepper and one yellow pepper. Next, I'm going to start chopping the tomatoes. I'm going with a size that's similar to the peppers. Now that I'm done with the tomatoes, I'm going to chop the hot peppers and transfer them into the bowl. I'm also going with a size that's similar to the peppers and the tomatoes. Next, I'll dice the onion. And next, I'll chop the cloves of garlic. Next, I'm going to finely chop the coriander and transfer them into the bowl. Now that I'm done chopping my ingredients, this is what everything looks like. So colorful, right? Next, I'm going to add the sea salt and combine all the vegetables using a cooking spoon. I'm going to keep mixing until the vegetables start producing some brine, just like when making sauerkraut. I won't be adding any water to this, so I need the vegetables to produce as much brine as possible. To get the best result, I'll keep mixing the vegetables until I'm satisfied with the amount of brine. I 
As you can see, it has produced enough liquid. So next, I'm going to transfer the salsa into the jar. But first, I'm going to throw in the bay leaves. Next, I'm going to attach a funnel to the mouth of the jar and begin transferring my salsa into the jar. In case you're wondering why I've added bay leaves to my lacto-fermented salsa, that's because bay leaves contain tannin, which will help the vegetables maintain their crunch. It also stops them from becoming mushy while fermenting. I also mentioned this in my lacto-fermented cucumber video, which I'll link somewhere above this video. Please feel free to check it out. I'm going to use a temper to push down the vegetables so that it, they are compact and well packed. After the jar is packed to my satisfaction, I'm going to throw in one more bay leaf and put in the glass weight to keep the salsa submerged and not float to the, to the top of the jar. Next, I'll seal the jar for one week and keep it on the kitchen counter with a tray underneath to catch any excess liquid that might bubble over during fermentation. I'm gonna leave this to ferment for one week as the vegetables are really small in size. Now it's one week later and as you can see the glass weight did a fantastic job at keeping the vegetables submerged. You can see that the brine is clearly separated from the lacto-fermented salsa. Just look at that color, looks amazing doesn't it? So now it's time to open up the jar. I'm sure you can tell from the excitement on my face. I was also talking to the person behind the camera. So here's a closer look. I don't usually do this, but I had to sniff the lacto-fermented salsa just to get a whiff of it. And it smelled so good. I wish you could smell it from your screen right now. Using a fork, I'm going to take out the glass weight. Next, I'm going to scoop some of the lacto-fermented salsa into a small bowl. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, the vibrant color from day one has turned slightly dull. And now it's time for a taste test, my favorite part. Here I've got some tortilla chips and my lacto-fermented salsa. And it's time to dig in. Oh my goodness!
It tasted so good, tangy as expected with the right flavors. It felt like a carnival of flavors in my mouth. And the best thing is that this is very good for your gut health. And as you can see in this clip, I couldn't get enough of it. Please don't judge me, I love good food. Next time you have a craving for salsa, I would suggest you try making lacto-fermented salsa following this recipe. It takes a while to ferment, but I'm sure your gut will thank you for it. Believe me when I say this, once you try lacto-fermented salsa, you'll never go back to regular salsa. This recipe is perfect for summer or even any weather or occasion. And once opened, this needs to be kept in the refrigerator and can keep up to a month. But believe it or not, I went through this jar in less than two weeks because it was just so good. So, I guess we've come to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed watching, please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and please don't forget to click the notification bell icon so that you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them. The full recipe can be found in the description box below. Thank you for watching. Take care. See you next time. Bye.